Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about how to calculate your points for the skilled migration visas and also how to increase your points without IELTS 7. So as we all know that for the skilled migration visas or we call it as points tested visas, the point requirement is 65. So the visa subclasses are 189, 190 and 489. So if you are planning to lodge a 189 visa, which is a skilled independent visa, you need 65 points of your own. If you're planning to lodge a 190 visa, which is the skilled nominated visa, you need 60 points of your own and the state gives you another five points to make it 65. Um, if you are planning to lodge a 489 visa, which is a regional provisional visa, you need 55 points of your own and the state gives you 10 points. So the 65 points make you eligible to lodge the expression of interest in the skill select. We will be discussing the points allocated to an applicant for every aspect. So if you may want to have a pen and paper ready so that uh, you can actually calculate your own points. So the first is your age. So you do get maximum points if you are uh, between the age of 25 and 32. Now, Australia considers this age bracket as very, very productive. So that's why you do get maximum points for your age in this bracket. And also some people get confused that they have already turned 32 if they will be able to claim points. The answer is yes. So you can claim points till the day you have not turned 33. The next is your English. So you do need a minimum of six each to lodge your expression of interest. However, you don't get any points for that. To claim points for your English, you need a minimum of seven each and you get 10 points for that. Now the next one is the skilled employment outside Australia. So if you have worked outside Australia for three years in your nominated occupation, unfortunately you cannot claim any points. You can claim points only if you have done a minimum of three years outside Australia in your nominated occupation and you can claim five points for that. The next one is skilled employment in Australia. So most of you, if you are an international student and will be going on a 485 visa, then you may be able to get uh, skilled employment in your nominated occupation for one to two years and you will be able to claim five points for this. The next one is your qualifications. So please note that you will get points for your highest qualification. So for example, you have done a diploma in Australia, but you also have a bachelor's from overseas. You may be able to claim points for your bachelor's, which is 15 points. And also please note that the qualification does not have to be related to your nominated occupation. So what it means is that if your nominated occupation is chef and you have a bachelor's degree in accounting, you will still be able to claim 15 points for your bachelor's. The next one is Australian study requirement. So most of you who have done um, your studies in Australia, you will be able to claim points for your Australian study. The requirement is that you have to have studied two years in Australia. So if you have done that, for example, you've done a master's or a bachelor's or a diploma, which is for two years, then you will be able to claim five points for your Australian study. There are also points for the specialist education qualification, which is five points. So many of you might not be eligible for that because there are only very few fields in which uh, you can claim these extra five points. You can also claim five points for NATI. The next one is your partner skills. So you can claim five points for your partner skills, but please be aware that your partner has to be under 45 years of age. They need to have IELTS six each, and they need to have skill assessment in the occupation, which is on the same list as yours. So what it means is that if your occupation is on the MLT SSL list, then your partner's occupation has to be on the MLT SSL list as well. Otherwise you won't be able to claim points for your partner. You can also claim five points for regional study. So you have to have lived and studied in a regional area for two years to be able to claim five points. You can claim points for your professional year program that you do in Australia. So you get five points for it, but professional year program is only available in IT, engineering and accounting. 
you may have been able to calculate how many points you will have by the end of your studies. Now, also keep in mind if you are someone who is on bridging visa C and is studying or is getting some kind of employment experience in Australia, unfortunately, you won't be able to claim any points for your study or employment if you are on bridging visa C. If you think you won't be able to secure IELTS 7 each or PTE equivalent, there are some things that you need to do to increase your points. So the first thing is that you can do NATI, you can do professional year program because they both give you five points each. The other thing you should really consider is studying in a regional area. So even if you have started your bachelor's, you're in your first or second semester, you should consider moving into a regional area because Australian study in a regional area will give you extra five points. And also states like Tasmania, Northern Territory and South Australia, the whole state is actually a regional area and you will be able to secure five points if you are planning to lodge 190 visa in the future. And if you're planning to lodge the 489 provisional um, regional visa, then you will be able to get 10 points from your state. So, uh, which means that you will be able to secure 15 extra points if you move into a regional um, area for your studies. I hope this video was helpful and if you do have any questions about how to increase your points while you are on a student visa, please get in touch with us.